All right, so I have already talked about how much I love Golang on this channel. I've honestly made like a ton of content on it, probably too much for a channel that like made a lot of its fame off of Rust and C, C++. Golang is rad. One of the reasons why I love Go Golang is interacting with Rust APIs. I've already created a video on that. I'll link it up somewhere or in the description. You can find it on my channel. I don't, I don't really care. Um, but one of the other reasons why I love Golang is the Gen framework to create REST APIs. That's going to be what we talk about in this video. So it's incredibly simple. Um, I've already written up the code for a blog post. If you would like to read over that, you can check out the description. I'll leave a link to it. Um, but basically you instantiate your server here, you establish your routes, and you run the server with a port here. It is that easy, end of video, bye. Just kidding. We're going to walk through the code. It's very, very simple to understand. Um, essentially what you're going to have for a REST API, um, a very, very quick like high level crash course in REST APIs, you have routes which are associated with methods and those routes and methods are, in gen at least, are going to be associated with handler functions or callback functions. Um, so here you can see all three of those pieces. You've got your method here, which is a get or a post method. Um, there are also put, delete, um, option, and a couple of others. Um, but here you've got get and post. You've got your routes here, slash hello world or slash message. And you've got your handler functions. We've got handle get and handle, handle post. Um, if you look up above, you can see those functions here. I've actually like, you know, defined them. I promise they're not just magic, you know, magic methods or phrases. Um, so those are your handler functions here. So we're going to instantiate our server here with gen.default. We are going to establish our routes here and then we are going to run it. Um, so if we look up here, let's start with handle git. Git requests are incredibly easy um, to, to handle, basically. Um, all this is going to do is give us a return value. So we've got our handler function, we call it handle git, and it takes in a context. Now this context object, as we're going to see later, can be used to either service a response or to parse a request. Right here, what we're doing is handling a response. So we are saying the re a, a response to this function is going to be in the form of a JSON blob. This is the JSON function here. It is going to give you a status code. We're going to pass 200, which is the standard status code for like a successful request. And then we are going to give it this gen.h object. What this gen.h object basically is, is a very poorly named interface for a generic JSON blob. So here we see we've got like a string to string mapping. Um, we can also do objects, integers, things like that. But here we just want to pass a generic message. Um, now I go a little bit more in depth in my blog about Postman. Postman is amazing. I use it on a daily basis, um, but essentially it is a really great way to test out APIs. Um, so here um, is where you put in your URL. So this is going to be on localhost port 3000 and we are hitting the hello world route, which if you look down here, that is mapped to the handle get function. So if we call this, send it, we get the message hello world back. It is sending a get request to the slash hello world route and our server is running on port 3000. So get requests, very, very simple. Post requests are a little bit more complicated, but only a little bit. We're going to give it the handle post function here um, as a callback on the slash message route. So if we look right here, that is going to be how you call it. Localhost port 3000 slash message, and we are going to pass a post request. Post requests are used to pass data in. So what you're wanting to do there is to usually send JSON data to a web server. So if we look at handle post, it's a little bit more involved. Basically, the general process is going to be, I'm going to create a custom structure. I'm going to take the request body out of the request and try to parse it into or bind it into that custom structure. And then we're going to do something with that object that we now have. Um, so if we look here, we are creating a post rec object. If we go up and look at our post rec object, that is just a struct that we created ourselves. Very, very simple wrapping for a, um, basically a string object. We could have any number of objects or you know individual variables here if we wanted to, but I kept it simple. Um, so if we look down here, we create an empty, um, an empty post rec object. 
then we are going to bind the JSON data out of context. So context right here is going to have our request data. It is going to have a body that we are then going to try to bind into our custom struct here. So it's going to essentially try to parse out that JSON and put it into our, um, our custom structure right here. Um, if we have an error, we're going to pass a 501 and give a generic message that said that it did not bind properly. And then we're going to attempt to print out the message here before returning the message as part of our response. So if we run the call here, we're going to send the message like and subscribe to Val Haladev on YouTube and we get the status success and our message returned back here. So basically what it's doing, it is sending the message, a big JSON blob here, and the CTX, I think it's CTX dot request dot body. Um, so that's where you're actually getting your bytes object essentially. It's just a, a raw byte stream there. Um, it is going to then bind that into an empty structure here, an, an empty object based on our custom structure. And then it is going to run all of its logic down here. We could do any number of things. We could add this um, message to some kind of database, anything, you know, anything that you want your API to do. So I know that this is a very simple example, um, but I think it's, it's powerful in kind of displaying how quickly you can set up a simple REST API, or at least like the skeleton of a simple REST API and start adding some real power um, using Golang, which is again, wicked fast, super concurrent, all of those other fun things. Um, so I'm going to continue this, start doing a little bit more, um, adding some more complexity to these REST APIs and kind of display the reasons why I think Golang is a really great modern language to use for modern REST API development. If you enjoyed this, let me know by leaving a like, comment, whatever. Um, take it easy. Peace.